All right, today we'll be starting the landscaping around our little building. This is the part I've really been looking forward to. I have some great ideas to share with you and I hope some fun techniques you haven't seen before. So stay tuned and see what we do. So this is our landscaping board that I will be gluing my building to. I've already marked out my what I want to put here, some areas for myself. Now this is a piece of 3 8 inch plywood. I bought it at Home Depot. And the nice man there was very happy to cut it for me to the size I needed. So it's 18 inches by 18 inches. And the first step in making any project when you're not going to be able to pick it up later is sign the bottom. So my name, my signature, and the date, the year, are all on the bottom. Now we're going to, the building will be here, it will be facing this way. This part will all be sidewalk, and then this part on the other two sides will actually be oh, like a dirt alley away. <clears throat> One of the things I want to do, I want to put an edge. I don't want the plywood edge to show. So, since I'm going to be paving with egg cartons, and this is my egg cartons I used, I had, I've been say I save all my egg cartons. I cut a whole bunch of strips. These are three fourths of an inch wide, and they come from all around here. These are the side edges. And I've got a whole mess of them. And we are going to start by gluing these around the base. So let me get this where you can see it. I'm just going to use my glue and I'm going to glue. And then when the glue is set on that part, then I will be folding them over onto the edge. And this will form, it'll cover that edge up so we don't see the raw plywood. And it'll kind of frame out our sidewalk and also our dirt areas. And it'll just make it look a little more finished. Now I'm starting a little ways from the corner because I'm going to bend one around the corner. So you can see the corner here. I'm just bending one around. I've pre-bent it so I know where it's going to bend. And I won't do the whole rim at once. I'll probably do... And I'm going to kind of make these random links. I'm going to look better that way. I'm just lining them up so they're lined up with the bottom edge. And I'm not going to go all the way around at one time. I'll, I'll get some on and I'll let them dry and then I'll get some more on and let them dry. And when I get this all the way around, I'll be back. All right, so this is all dry. The glue, I've glued them all around and I've left one corner to show you what I'm going to do because we need to make a, we need to make this fall down and look nice. I'm cutting down straight and be very careful using the knife. And then just fold it over and cut off about a 45 degree angle. And then fold the other side down. And remove that. And now they meet up. They don't meet up perfectly, but we'll be putting some mortar in just like we did with the eggshells on the sides. So now let me move the camera because I've done a small section. Let's see if I can get aimed into where I want to be. So we need to get this glued down to the plywood. I'm using my fast grab tacky. I've got this hanging over the edge of the table and you'll see why in a second. And we're going to be the tacky glue. Don't get too much because you don't want it to ooze out too much. Put some glue down there. Got a little too much there. And now this doesn't want to stay down by itself. We have to condense it. 
So I have some freezer paper, just like what I work on top of. It's got a, a shiny, waxy side. You could use waxed paper if you don't have this. Lay that over the top, and then a piece of scrap wood. And then... open up my C-clamps and then we're going to use some small C-clamps to hold this down. Now, if you don't have clamps you could probably put like oh something heavy on top of it like a, a can of food or something a brick. You just need to push this down and hold it so it's in position until that glue dries and just leave this for about a half hour and then take it off and let it finish drying. The reason for the paper is we don't want to glue this board to our edging. So we'll let this dry and I'll get the rest of it glued down and then I'll show you the next step. Alright, so now I have the edges all glued down. So now we need to permanently attach our toy store to the base. So for this today I decided to, I bought this amazing goop household cement. I'm going to use that, and this stuff smells really bad, but it's supposed to like hold practically anything together forever. Alright, so I've got this applied here, and I think the easiest way to kind of get it on both surfaces, since it has to be on both surfaces, I'm going to set this down on the goop and pick it back up. And now this needs to set for about 10 minutes, and then I'll stick it together. And when it's all set up and dry, we'll go on to the next step. All right, now that my building is glued down to its base, we need to start thinking about what we're going to do. I'm going to have a street lamp on this corner and then back on this side, which you can't see from there, I am going to have another light. So remember this tape wire that we put out that I brought out through the floor when I wired the house? I've got everything plugged in. We're going to double check. And... It works so good. The electricity is still good to it, so I'm going to unplug everything. And now, let's see, I need to trim that because that's too long. The sidewalk will go just right over this tape wire. But just like when we did our tape wire inside the building, we're running this running tape wire from that corner to that corner. So I need about this much. And just like before, I'll connect it with some brads uh, and then another strip down this side. And when I get that done, I'll be back and I'll show you how that went. All right, I've run my tape wire on both spots and I've bratted, I've actually double bratted, put two brads in each connection because the sidewalk is going to cover all of this and we won't be able to get back to this to fix it. But the next step we need to do, we need to test to make sure that we still have electricity everywhere we're supposed to and yep, that, whoops, my fingers are in the way. That works and that one's connected. Great. Now at the end, I'm going to, let me back up and come down to where All right, this is where my lamp post is going to stand. And I have this lamp post, this lamp I bought that I showed you at the beginning of the, the video. And I'll show a better picture of that as we go on today. But that's going to stand here on this corner. And that's going to be a kind of an unprotected area. I can envision this getting knocked over, knocked off. And I don't want to directly wire it to my, just by wire hardwiring it on. So I'm actually going to... I dug through my electrical supplies and I found a couple of a package of small plugs because this didn't come with plugs and these are a little bit smaller than the ones that come on the fixtures that do have plugs and plug in wall receptacles and what I'm going to do I'm going to install the, the plug-in receptacle right here I've already kind of marked my holes but I'll need to drill in and get it put in I'll be putting a receptacle, it looks like this, and I don't like these for in the dollhouse because they're way out of scale, but this is going to be hidden. I'm going to put this here, my lamp post will stand next to it, my light will plug in 
with a little plug and then it will be covered. I'm going to put a planter around the bottom of my lamp post so it will cover up and disguise this but I'll still have access. I'm also installing one on the far side where my other exterior light will go. So let me get this installed and I'll show you how it looks and I'll try and get the camera so we can see the the uh, lamp post too. Alright I've got my plug installed, my outlet installed. I've got another lamp here that I'm using to test with because I don't have my fixture I'm going to hook up ready but that works so now that's all set up that's where my light fixture will go for the outside and I have another one over here my lamp that we'll be putting out is a street light and like I said there'll be a flower box around that so our next step is going to be starting the sidewalk so let me get all my le my electrical stuff all put away and then we'll get the sidewalk going alright so now we are ready to do our sidewalk and for our sidewalk I used this section of my 18 pack egg cartons and I cut pieces they are two inches by two and a quarter inches because two inches was as wide as I could get a straight line this way and this is just a skosh over four and a half so at two and a quarter it leaves me a little bit of grout space so I'm going to start lining these up and when I've taped over, you'll notice I've, t I've put the white electrical tape over all those connections just as an extra safeguard. And I will start gluing. And like I said, this is going to be glued right over our tape wire. And this is going to go around. I'm going to use regular tacky glue on this part because it's a little thinner and it spreads a little bit better. Um, my fast grab tacky is just a little too thick for this job. I've used the egg carton <clears throat> for pavers and for stones and stuff on a lot of projects. And this is just the, the glue that I find works the best. You get too thin a glue and it soaks into your cardboard. Too thick and it just it just doesn't lay flat. And we don't really need the wallpaper paste. We don't need that low of moisture on this. And kind of get them set up the way I want them. <clears throat> and then the next pair. And there, it's an old sidewalk, so it's not supposed to be perfectly even. I don't want to leave too much space between, but I want a little bit. And I will be gluing for a while, and since probably watching me glue would be, this would probably be about as exciting as watching paint dry, I'll um, continue on doing this. It, I may get it all done today, or it may take me a couple of days. One thing, if I find that my edges, since these are kind of big pieces, if I find that the edges are starting to curl up, then I'll set something heavy on top of the areas, on top of the corners until they dry. Um, other than that, it's just pretty much going to be, until I get to where my planter's going to be, it will just be a matter of gluing these down. So I'll be back when I get, that, get to the planter area. Alright, I have the sidewalk all glued down, both directions right up to this point. And they don't quite mat lean, stop there, but what I did then is I cut two pieces. These two are two and a remember these were two by two and a quarter. These are two and a quarter by two and a quarter. I was able to get barely get two and a quarter out of the carton if I cut really carefully. Then these two are two and a quarter by two and a half to fit in there. And now I need and you'll see on my board, I've drawn a circle. This is where my planter will go. And I'm just using the, this lid for a pattern. So what I need to do, put my pieces down in their places as best as I can with the plug there. Because I don't want to lose that. That one kind of fits around it. I don't want these to go under my planter. So now I'm going to put my planter back in place. Oops. 
I'm like this one just a little straighter. This is kind of fiddly, but that's okay. Fiddly's good. Fiddly keeps us on our toes. And now I need to cut out, I'll just use my scissors and cut this out. Now I can glue this. And since I get these all trimmed and make sure they look right, then I'll glue them down. Then the only other part of this I need to do is I still need to do the doorway. So when I get this glued down, we'll check in together and I'll do the doorway. Right there's that front door, and here's our sidewalk that's glued in front of it. So now we need to cover up this area and make it look like the rest. So I've cut some little pieces of paper. These are just some scratch paper I had here. And what I need to do is I need to cut a pattern. We're going to do it just like we did the pattern for the wallpaper. I'm hoping that um, we can both see where I've got the camera put in. Now I need to cut some narrow strips. We can overlap those and go out as far as we need. But it's just so much easier when we can make a pattern this way than trying to measure and it's always easier to cut to a pattern than to try and measure these little dinky spaces. And so many times when you try to measure it, then you end up mismeasuring and having to recut it several times. And this way, we put our paper in, and we're pretty much guaranteed that whatever we cut is going to fit. Okay, so that's going to fit now. So, all right, so this is the pattern that I had that I taped together a little bit ago, and I used it to cut out this piece of egg carton, and it's all glued down now. So that's all set. The only th the next step on this part, on the sidewalk part, will be to color it and then we'll seal it and grout it and seal it again. But before that, we need to move on to the planter. So let me get everything set up and moved around so we can see that and we can get that planter going. Well, now it's time to start on that planter. And you've seen me use this before, probably. This is builder's foam. I bought a four foot by eight foot sheet of this several years ago. And I've made tons of stuff with it. I'm almost out. It's almost time to buy a new piece. But I remember I used this container to mark my spot on my board. And then I used it to mark a piece of builder's foam. And I cut this out. You just cut it out with a craft knife or a serrated knife. It doesn't matter. I wanted it kind of rough. And then I cut out the inside. So this is the shape that my planter will be. So now I need to mark this. I want it to look like stone on the sides. This makes really good stone. So first I like to go through and kind of just mark it with a pencil. It's always good to mark where you're going to cut. So I'll be drawing around like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not going to do the top. If I was going to make this so that the, the stone was on the top, then I would run the stones up over that. But I'm there will actually be, um, I'm going to take these leftover pieces of egg carton and actually make a, a rim around the top so I don't have to have this come down. So I'm just going to continue to mark like this. I'll go all the way around, but for right now I'll just show you what I'm doing. So I've got this marked, and I'm going to use various tools. I'm going to use my craft knife, and I'm going to cut this out. So I kind of round it down, so it looks like there's separate stones. And it's not going to show very much at this stage. What we do next is what will make it look like stones. The painting is what makes this look like stones. So let me turn the camera off and work on this, and when I get it all carved out, I'll be back. Alright, so I have 
carved it out. It's really rough, and that's what it's going to look like at this stage. We just need to get the basics of, so that we can see there's some texture there. So the next step, we get messy. And this is just black paint, just black craft paint. Uh, it's always best, I find, to use, since this is a styrofoam product, use a water-based product on it. You'll be fairly safe then. But what we need to do with this first coat, we're going to paint this all black. Um, get it really down in there. You don't want to see. Now, I don't care if this edge and this edge have paint on them. Those will be, this one side will be glued to the board, the other side will have a top on it. But I want especially the outside all coated and the top of the inside too because it may show depending on my what I put in there on how my planting area works. And it'll just look more finished if it doesn't pink anymore. I mean pink's a nice color but not when you're trying to make convince people it's stone. And the brush I'm using is kind of stiff because I want it to really go down into those cracks. And this is kind of fragile, so it's kind of hard. You've got to be careful. This isn't very thick. So I'm being really careful. There's a fine line between shoving that brush in there to get all the paint covered and breaking the whole thing into little tiny bits. So I'm, I'm kind of walking a fine line there. I'm really hoping I don't break it and have to start all over. So that's really all there is to this. I'll be painting. I'll show you. I'll paint the inside too. So that's all there is to this step. When this paint is, I'll finish all the way around and let this dry. And then we'll start giving these rocks some dimension and shape. All right, so this is pretty much dry. I'm anxious to go on. Now what I did, you see all these bottles of paint here in the front, I just went into my craft paints and I grabbed every container of gray that I saw and I also grabbed a eucalyptus green and an autumn brown because I think when you're doing even gray rocks you need a little green and a little brown to make it look more natural. There's more colors to rock than just gray. And I've got a handful of brushes here. I've put a little bit of paint out on my board, on my plate. And now I'm just going to randomly pick some colors and I'm I'm not going to worry about mixing them on my brush. I'm going to get the brush fairly dry. And I'm going to start I'm going to pull a little light gray out. And this is going to be many layers. Just to go. Now, very careful, be very careful that you don't cover up the black that you worked hard to get down in those crevices. Try to keep your painting up here on the outside. You want that black to give some depth. And kind of randomly paint colors. And I don't care if they get all muckied up. I can always get more paint out. It's not going to take much paint. You can already see it's starting to have some dimension. And every once in a while, throw in a little brown. Maybe toss a little green on here. There. See, so it gives a little depth. And I'm just going to continue around. I've got, when one brush gets pretty me messed up, then I can change to a new brush. Uh, if you would rather have your rocks be more brown, then pull out brown paint out of your craft paints. But add a little gray. And still add in a little bit of green, too. Because those colors happen in nature. There's always a little green when you've got rocks outside, because that's moss and lichens and stuff. But now all that texture that I made and I left when I cut is all going to start showing up. So I'll finish painting this and then I'll show you when I get done. Alright, I've got it pretty much painted all the way around. I've added some touches of different colors. 
and of the grays. Let's see if I can get one. We can actually see it. And it looks like rocks. So now this just needs to dry, and then I can cut the top that will go on it. We'll glue this on, and we can start grouting our sidewalk. All right, so I've got them all cut out, and I've kind of sized them. I did a little. I had to do a little fussy kind of little cutting on the ends to get them to fit. But now I'm going to glue them on. Hopefully I've got them sized so they'll be the right size now. <laughs> and just like with the cement on the sidewalk, we will be putting grout between the edges here. So it's okay that they don't line up perfectly. And now that's... Let's get these lined up. There. Now we have our planter. So now I need to move the Toy Store building back up here and we can glue this into place on the sidewalk and start coloring our sidewalk. Alright, so now we have we'll double check, yep, everything fits. Looks good. So now I need to put some glue here. And I want to put quite a bit of glue here. I want that to really stay. I want that I don't want to take any chances on my planter, you know, popping off. The grout that comes up next to it will help hold it, though, a little bit. Okay, now that'll need to dry. While that's drying, we can work on the sidewalk. And when we did the egg shells on the sides, I used paint to color those, because I think it works the best for that, although it's not your only option. For the egg cartons because they're more porous. I like to use chalks. Now these are the same kind of chalks that we use when we do miniature food. I'm trying out a new package. I bought myself some of these Artist Loft soft pastels from the Michael's store. They were on sale one day and I picked up a couple of packages of them. I, I thought I'd see how they work. My other chalks are getting some kind of getting banged up and I'm running out of certain colors. So on this project, I'll be using the brown, the grays, and into the the kind of reddish browns, and I'll also use a little bit of green, the black obviously, the, but all the grays, and I like this range of grays. There's kind of grays and and brownish grays in the black down here, because cement is not solid. It's not a solid color. It's got variations depending on you know weathering and whoops, that was good. Probably should have let that set dry before I set anything on top of it. Because <laughs> um, of weathering and everything. So we'll use chalks. Now I use a combination of Q-tips. I might use some paper towels. And I even get in there with my fingers some. So let me get a wet wipe. Because this is going to be really messy. And after I turn the camera off, I may actually go get myself a wet towel to keep handy to keep my fingers getting from getting too dirty. So start with a Q-tip and rub it on this gray. And we're just going to rub. Actually, I think I'm going to use my finger. See how we're getting some depth of color there? Let's try this one over it. And now I need to go over all the chalk, all the um, egg cartons that are on here. And it's going to take a while. I need to stay away from this part really until it gets set up, but this is where the camera's sitting, so. But I will be working along at this. Um, and when I get some more done, I will turn the camera back on and you can see, see how I've done. And I'll show you some tricks about getting it near the building and stuff. 
as you can see I've done a couple of bricks a couple of these pavers now and I used a little green I took some green and even a little yellow ochre and I ran along here because water would run down the side of the building and moss would build up there so that's something to keep in mind you're gonna have different colors in different places but here's I mean basically whoops, very carefully demonstrating it where you can't see it just rub your finger on the chalk and make kind of circular motions. You don't want to have it going any one direction. And just every time I bring my finger back, I've rubbed it on a different piece of chalk. And along this edge too, because that, that needs to be aged too. Don't use very much black. Just touch the black and kind of rub that. Maybe a little green on this one. The yellow ochre, like we use on our foods to show baked color, that looks good on here too. Really, anything in the gray brown color family. And yellow is, golden yellow is a part of that brown family. But I just need to keep working here. And the next time you see this project, the next scene here that we do on the on camera these will all be colored and aged and then we'll go on to grouting. Alright so I've got the chalk all over the um, the sidewalk and I've got it colored. I'm happy with the color and now just like when we did our walls when we sealed when we did the eggshells we need to seal this with matte mod I'm going to use matte mod podge on this but I pour it out into a container the chalk will um, carry over into your mod podge so don't use it directly out of the the um, container for this put it into something that you can throw away any leftover that gets dirty but it's another case if we're just going to just like before seal it with the clear Mod Podge. Uh, it only takes one coat so this needs to get sealed and then it needs to dry and then we'll put in our grout and go on to the next step. So let me get this done so we can move on. Alright so I've now put two coats of the matte Mod Podge on here and that's all dry so now it's time to grout. Now this is the same tile grout that I used for the, um, the, the stones on the side of the building made out of eggshells. Except this time I squirted in some gray paint when I made, mixed it up. So this is mixed with water and paint to make it gray instead of white. Um, just if you're going to do this make sure you make plenty because it's hard to match your color again if you don't get your mix of paint to grout the same it'll be a different color but let's just apply some and then I will turn the building around and show you the parts I've got done so I'm using this just a little plastic knife to spread it with let's get up here where you can actually see and I was kind of spreading it into the cracks. And I've got my stones a little bit more brown than I want them in the end, but you'll see why here in a minute. So we're getting that. And I've got a paper towel and I've got some water here. And I'm just getting this barely damp. And I'm wiping this over, I'm leaving as much as I can in that crack. And I'm leaving a haze of gray grout, which will act as kind of a color wash on my stones. Now when your paper towel, if your paper towel starts to fall apart, be sure and wipe up all those parts. But that's really all there is to this. Just continue along, doing a small area at a time. You don't want to get it too awfully wet because you're, in case your eggs cartons are not completely sealed on their edges. And I'm also going down around the sides over the edge too. That's really all there is to it. Let me see if I can move things so that you can see the part 
that's been done that I did earlier this morning. There's the part I did that's kind of getting dry. So that's really all there is to it. When I get all done, I'll go I'll come back and we'll put a clear finish on and then this section will be done. All right, now this is all grouted and it's dry. So again, we're going to put on our coat of clear matte um, Mod Podge to seal this and then our sidewalk is finished. So this is the end of today's video. Next week we'll work on the alleyway and we'll install the lights and do some other finishing touches on the outside. So I'll talk to you later. Bye.